Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it wonderful to be here? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. We know where here is, don't we? Yes, we do. We're not talking about this address. We're talking about in Christ. Amen. The kingdom of our Lord Amen. in the Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Father, in all things we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for this, your beloved, gathered together in your name one spirit in you Christ Jesus thank you Heavenly Father for great grace father thank you for the understanding that you are truly the only power you're all power you're all knowledge and you're ever present and we thank you dear Lord for being here with us in all things father not by might and the power but by your spirit at your good pleasure have your will continue to have your will in our midst at all times in the name of Jesus bless every hearer in the name of Jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great grace that's already taking care of things that we don't even realize need taking care of. But that's, that's your grace. We thank you for your peace that passes understanding. Thank you for joy unspeakable. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen and amen. 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 Exciting. Amen. Exciting lessons in grace coming forth from the book of Ruth, glory to God. We, it's so wonderful where we are and we don't wanna rush over anything. I cannot, I can't emphasize that enough. When are we gonna move from the, when the Lord says so? You understand mm. what I mean by that? When the Lord says so. You see what happened this morning mm -hmm. in the beautiful, exhortation and all throughout the the praise this you you understand in midnight mm, right Amen. you hear that right. you're understanding that the spiritual principle because at midnight we're fine that's okay. when Boaz discovers Ruth is at his feet we're in this lesson in, in Ruth you see that so I know we've looked at things and we just want to let the Lord do this we got to understand the spiritual significance of midnight because it is a time you think about it where you awake naturally last night at midnight some people may have been and most people were not mm -hmm. so spiritually we see a same picture at this particular time in spirit there are a lot of people sleep they're still doing things after the ways of the traditions they're, they're not seeking God. They're just doing what tradition said to do and doing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's ineffective. It's known to be ineffective, but still just going through motions. Mm -hmm. But at midnight, God by his scripture showed us something. This, by her being obedient and going, going to Boaz. Now listen, he's the master of the harvest. He's garnering his grain. Women did not go there. You hear this? Women weren't supposed to go there. Ruth is there. She's being obedient. This is what, what we need to hear. You're going to experience some things. Well, that was supposed to. No, it ain't supposed to because you're talking about spirit. You're looking at natural things and we're talking about spirit. In spirit, whatever God wants is what happens. Now, it's no such thing as supposed to. See that? So we need to hear and we need to understand that. Ruth 8 and 9 read this and it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself and behold a woman lay at his feet and he said who art thou she answered I am Ruth thine handmaid spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid for thou art a near kinsman now we develop many of those things but we need to slow down just a little bit because I know this is a third meeting and we've talked touched on this midnight but I need us to think about what the scriptures tell us happened at midnight that's when the bride the call cry went up the bridegroom's coming amen you see that mm. the bridegroom so if you're ready you're ready to go out and meet him there were those that weren't ready you see that and I'm gonna tell you something else about that you don't buy this oil with money, because we're talking about being filled with spirit. So why are you going out trying to, that's what people are doing now, trying to buy things. Amen. You see, you th they really think you can buy the anointing or you do this much, you get somebody's attention and you'll get to hang with this crowd. Listen, there's no such thing as an, an in crowd 
in the spirit. Everybody's one in Christ. Who who you trying to who you need to rub elbows with? You see that? You know, you 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 are in the one that's all and in all. Glory to the name of the Lord. Right. See that? Mm -hmm. And we say this midnight is a transition. Old is passed away. See that? The new is coming in. And you can't look, you can't mix them. You cannot mix them. That's why people are they're stagnant right now because they're trying to mix them. You can't mix these realms. And I thank God for that, that the old is passing away. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us, if any man, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I guarantee you, you can go about any place and somebody's telling you something about the law. Somewhere. Somewhere. See that? So we want to hold on to these things. Yeah. Now, not only did we see the bridegroom coming at midnight, look what else she's experiencing. Remember we went to Luke 11 and we saw where Jesus, is, uh, there's a parable about how someone came to a friend at midnight. Well, you you know you're going to get help, you know? It's, it's, it, it said it's not so much that they're friends, but the importunity. You, you, you're, you're insistent. You didn't, you, and you're persistent, you know? You, you know that you can get help from this friend. So, so what? It's midnight. You see that? What she, what is she, who is she? She's Ruth. Her name means friend. See that? Hallelujah. Friend. Go on to her friend for help. And knows that she will what? Not be denied. See that? She will not be disappointed. She will not give up. That's the beautiful part about it. Hallelujah. We also saw from Acts, Paul and Silas praying. They're in prison. An earthquake came. I'll tell you how it looks. I always tell you I talk about me and won't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. An earthquake. <laughs> Earth, leaning to my own understanding. Amen. Prophet said right there told me many, many years ago. Amen. God's anointed you, but you, you, you make a mistake, you lean to your own understanding. Okay? All right? Didn't work. But then when you submit to God, the earth started quaking. See that? Things start shaking. Everything that can be shaken, heaven, my mind, and earth, everything that could shake was shaken. Still been shaken. You understand that? Mm -hmm. An earthquake. An earthquake. What happened? The prison doors flung open. Look, at midnight, you can stay in there or you can come out. You understand? Right. That was also an opportunity. How many remember the jailer was, was saved? Yes. Right. The one that's keeping you in bondage gets delivered. Yes. So don't try to carry any any uh, thing over in this precious realm in right. the kingdom. Don't right. try to bring that bondage yes. over there. Indeed. You see that? Because we're talking about what midnight speaks to. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're talking about what it means in the spirit. Yes. Glory to the name of the Lord. So what else did, did we see? The, the young man fell. Eutychus fell from, mm -hmm. from the law. I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing that the scriptures put the detail. He fell from the third loft. Listen, he fell from the third, from the third loft. Look, everybody thought he was dead. Paul said, listen to the wording. His life is in him. Listen, mind, will, and emotions, from the human perspective, you're going to fall down from that at midnight. And what's going to rise up in you is the spirit man. Paul said his life is in him. The life comes from God. Nobody else can put life in you. You see that? The life comes from God. We can do all this artificial stuff we want to, but if God says it's over, it's over. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. So his spirit is in him. That's what's important. Think about all the, now everything that we see from the new covenant, you can just lay that over with Ruth. Glory to the name of the Lord. Then we looked at one other that we had kind of skipped the first time because we were actually didn't want you to, want you to cumber. But listen, at midnight, look in Acts, there's a shipwreck in progress. You hear this? At midnight, they drop an anchor. 
winds, what we would call a hurricane. That's what they were experiencing at that time in, in, in the ship. We're not talking about these nice luxury cruise ships and stuff we go on. We're talking about something made of wood boards and, and you in this hurricane out in the sea. No control of you see that. But thank, thank God what happened. All lives were saved, but that ship was broken to pieces. You hear that? It came to the point, dump all the wheat over. Everything you laden with, you've got to dump all that over. You're not carrying that in the new day. You see that? That ship that's broken up. Did they fix that ship and carry Paul on to Rome? No, they did not. There was another ship that had went to that Malta, and they took that ship. You see what I'm saying? Don't think you're going to bring that old stuff. Because it is not going to work. And we need to keep this always in mind that we're in a new day. I don't care how we feel. If, the, if, the, if what you're seeing is depressing, you quit looking at it. Put your, look, think on things above. When Jerusalem is free, every day you're going to sit at a certain hour and look at the same stuff and come away depressed. Don't call me and tell me about it. Look, you stop looking at it. You start thinking on things above. Like I told you last last time we came together, if you, look, instead of trying to do this in and of ourselves, let the Spirit of God be true in us, whatever environment you're in, just take a moment and thank God Amen. that He is in every person. Yes. So what if the, the clerk was rude to you? He's in every person. Right. See that? Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Declare that. Declare, just declare it. Declare it. In your heart. You ain't got to go around blasting. You got to use the story you loud speak. I'm not talking about that. Just in your heart declare that everybody that I'm coming in contact with every day has the Spirit of God in them. They, do, they may not know it, but they do. They got it. They got it. That's right. See that? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When, when they do decide to wake up to whom... Who they, who they are in God? Are they? Is God going to have to do anything special for them? Just wake them up. Just wake them up. That's all. And we thank God for this. We thank Him for it, Bishop Paul. See that? Hallelujah. The, when the Christ wakes you up, I guarantee you'll be wide awake. That's right, man. Everything. Did you try to wake them up? Come over. Come over. Come over here and do this and do this. Look. If the Spirit of God does not draw somebody, leave them alone. Amen. You hear that? You hear that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ruth 3 and 9 reads like this. And he said, Who art thou? And she, read, she answered, Rather, I am Ruth thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Now, this is where the Lord wants us to understand. This question right here. Who art thou? Who art thou? At this time, we should know who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know who they are, but they're so ready to tell somebody about the Lord. If you don't know who you are, you don't know who God is. You don't know who the Christ is, and it's just that simple, and we got to understand that. You may think, no, I need to know about him, and then I learn about me. No, if you, if you know who you are, you already know who he is. This thing, like Bishop Paul said, up here trying, I heard you loudly and clearly. What you're telling us is a transformation is taking place and we don't have anything to do with it. It is just happening because the Spirit of the Lord, the Word of God is going forth. It doesn't return to Him void. Hallelujah. When He speaks in the midst of us, it's accomplishing that to which it was sent. And it doesn't matter where we are in anywhere, it's going to do what God intends for it to do. It's just that simple, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Who art thou? Most people will do right here. They have this attitude that being humble is not agreeing with God. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't mean to, but, it, but this is what they do. I'm just an old sinner. I'm just an old dirty sinner. You can't say that right here. Because that's not who you are. Where is she? She is in Bethlehem of Judah. And you know what? If she, that's the house of bread and praise. 
That's where God is. And when you come here, we need to know who we are. Who is this to? Who are these people? Who are Naomi's people that you followed out of Moab? You came out of flesh. You came out of the world. You said you follow her. You said her people will be your people. Her God will be your God. Who are these people? They are representing the people of God, the children of God. And you are very much a part of that. You know that she does not say, I'm Ruth the Moabites. Because that's not who I am anymore. That's not who I am anymore. It's after midnight. Don't, don't tell me I'm part of that. I left behind somebody. Please hear the Lord. This is so simple. Glory to his holy name. I'm not part of that that I left behind. Ain't none, none of that on me. I don't smell no stain, no smoke, nothing on me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You got to know who you are. What she say? First of all, I'm Ruth. I'm your friend. I'm your I'm your handmaid. Handmaid. I'm your I'm your maid servant. That is like saying a bun slave. And I told you all, a bun slave is like this. The master says, "Okay, you can go. I don't want to. I will stay with you. I want to serve you until I die." That's that's the heart set she's got. <clears throat> Remember, we went back to chapter two. And we laid those verses from chapter 2 over what she is saying now. When she first came, hallelujah, we saw him already protecting her and looking out for her. The Bible said it was her hap. I'm going to tell you, you changed that word hap to grace. It was the grace of God that landed her right where she was and Boaz happened to come to the field. The master came to the field that day. He asked about her. And then from then on, he telling her who she is. Somebody please hear the Lord because the Lord already knows these things. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. So who are we? Who are we? Well, you have, like Bishop Paul was saying, thank you so much for helping. You, it's, there's not this separation. There's not uh, Jew and Gentile here. There's not bond of free. There's not male or female. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about, in this new day, we're just talking about Christ. You understand that? So all that that was separate, that has no part in this whatsoever. So, a Jew, listen, 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 Romans. Romans 2, 28, 29, just two verses, just listen to it. For well, he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Isn't this wonderful? Amen. You hear that? Amen. Hear this? Hmm. This you somebody you want to know who you are? You hit you the first verse. Okay. All right. You belong in Bethlehem of Judah. See that? You belong there. We belong in heavenly places in Christ because he saw to it. So you, you need to know that. We need to know that glory to the name of the Lord. Go with me to Ephesians, if you will. The Lord would not lead this. We need to know who we are. And I appreciate him. And look, I don't have nothing to do but what he says. Thank you, Father. Ephesians chapter 2. We got to say it. Now, I'm going to read you from the King James Version. I think it might be the New King James Version. But, but you, you, you hear it. Or you can follow along. We need to know who we are. This is very important. I'm going to give you some scriptures. May not get to all of them today, but I'll give you the scriptures and we can come together the next time and continue. Why? Was the, the, was the promised land, was it conquered in one day? No. What did it say? No. By little and little. Why? Why was that? What purpose did God have for that? See, if I give you all of it, the beasts of the field, they, they look, they, 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 just, they just destroy you. You got to get empowered to be able to deal with everything there. Plus, first of all, then you multiplying, you see. While you're obeying God, you are multiplying yeah. in the spirit, glory to God. So by little and little, we're not in a hurry. We just want to hear God. Verse 1 of Ephesians 2. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. What's quickened? Made alive. If you made alive, then you was that you were dead. See that? Wherein in time past ye walked or lived according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, 
among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You're going to have to know what you left behind. Because if you don't know what you left behind, you will automatically try to bring it into the new. Now listen, but, verse 4 says, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. See this? I don't know why people can, if they do read a verse like this, if that's what saved you, you think maybe God want to keep you like that? Mm -hmm. You think it'll be used to help keep you? The grace of God is what I'm talking about. Yes, you, you think you would, he would be keeping you by his grace. Amen. But then, why do you see so much of people doing it their own way? All, all this, there, there'll be a time... There'll be a time, it should come to this. If we came together like this, it just should be just for fellowship. But every single person, every, every person will know, will be able to answer like Ruth, who, tell who I am. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not to depend on something, it's going to be in you. Like Christ said, this river of life will be in you, flowing up out of you. You see that? It's going to be in you. A well. See that? Hallelujah. You won't have to, all, all will be teachers. You, you hear God? You hear that? Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Verse 6 says, it have raised us up together. Like I, talk, I say it many times in case people watch the video. You want to know, why are those, those letters back there? Why are those steps? Because... That's not decoration. That's, that's what we, we went through something. You see, and it's just a blessed reminder to you. And I hope that your, your mind really is stayed on that top step to know that you're seated. You know, you, you're seated. You've been through all these. And you're seated together with Christ. Look at the back of your bulletin. Hallelujah. You're seated together with him. Not something we made up. These come from the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. So then, so where you see it? In heavenly places. Where? With Christ. In Christ Jesus. See that? That in the ages to come. Ages to come? You mean you, you, you shut up in this world? See, Ruth left that. That's all you're going to know in Moab's flesh. That's all you're going to know. All you're going to know in Moab is flesh. I, you don't have to wonder how Orpah is doing. Oh, remember her other sister-in-law that went back and stayed there? Ruth, but you see how Ruth is doing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See this, in his ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. How? Through Christ Jesus. Well, Ruth, you're so obedient. I know we haven't gotten over to that part yet. But you're going to end up married to Boaz. And, and there's a child coming. Obey it. A child is coming. You hear this? Go, go over to the new covenant and see what you find all this in the, in the lineage of the Christ. You hear that? Mm -hmm. This is, you see, everything that we're doing, we're not here just to, to just do whatever I get. I don't know what people think that we're here to do, but the love of God should be so evident from us. Not that, that pretend stuff, like, oh, they were, they were nice to me. Last week, bro, something happened. Somebody has a spirit of us. <laughs> this week. It should never be that. Never, ever be that. It should be the same all the time. Why? The constant is a person. He's called the Christ of God. Hallelujah. And we are one in him. So then, verse 8 says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. You want to know who you are? You learning from these verses? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. You mean all that stuff I, I was doing? It, 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 no, it had nothing to do with it. Wasn't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus ain't going nowhere. <laughs> For we are his workmanship. Listen. See, this is where I underline stuff in my Bible. I've been on the underline a long time. This is coming apart. I guess y'all can see that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, just things that just right. grabbed you. Mm -hmm. Look what they say. We are his workmanship created in. Y'all hear this? Yep. Created in Christ Jesus. Who are you? And you're going you gonna to tell God if when, you, when, when, the, when the Christ asked this question of you that you, you are nobody? That you, you are still after all he's done? And Father has done for us and as us. You're going to tell him that you, you're just nobody. See that? I'm your friend, God. You see this? You laid down your life. Christ laid down his life for his friends. I'm your friend. See that? Hallelujah. I'm your handmaid. I'm in this forever with you. Know who we are. Know how to answer that question. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. See, God has ordained something for us to walk in or live in. See, that's how I'm walking in the spirit. That's, that's not one step before the other. That's a lifestyle in the spirit. See that? Mm -hmm. So then, God has ordained some things. But if we are doing what we want to do instead of allowing him to do it through us, how, how is what he ordained going to come for? Mm -hmm. You see that? Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, listen, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh, listen, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Thank God Ruth was smart enough to understand that. Mm. My mother-in-law is going, she's going. To Bethlehem of Judah, right. I'm going with her. Because yep. mm -hmm. if I stay here, I'm going to stay in that state. Yep. People in the world, people in church in the world, not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. Verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were made, were, were far off rather, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. We're far off. We're You're not in Moab. No. Mm -hmm. You're at home. We're at home, glory to God. For he is our peace. I just don't have any peace. You don't know who you are. See that? He is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There's no, there's no wall of partition between us. See that? On the spirit, we're all one. All one. I don't know where. You, you see how when people respect two powers, their idea of good and bad, you see the atrocities that can come forth. And that comes out of ignorance of not knowing who we be in Christ. That's all it is to it. That's all it is to it. You take anybody, go back and look at history, and if that person had just known that the very people that you have set out to destroy... You can't blame that one person because they got power because people align with them. You see what I'm saying? If you can do all this, you don't know who you are in Christ. Right. So why do you, why would you hate somebody that don't know who they are in Christ? Right. Why would you hate somebody? Right. If, if you can look back and see it, don't you think somebody had to look back and see God's grace on you too? Right. About something. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. You see, it's no degrees of no degrees of disobedience. If you if you're in Christ, you listen. If you're either righteous or unrighteous, you see that. Yeah, you, you understand that, and we gotta respect that because we'll try to say, "Well, this is this is this is good. This that that was bad." And then when you get into good and bad, then well, that bad is really not as bad as that other bad. It's no such thing. There's no such thing. It's just bad. If that's what you're looking at. If you're a human, that's how you're going to look at it. If you're in the spirit, you don't even see it. Amen. If you're in the spirit, you're not paying that attention. And that's what it wants is attention. You don't give thought to it. Thank you, Bishop Paul. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What did it do? How did that wall get about? Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments, you did? Mm -hmm. Abolished? Yep. Mm -hmm. You did. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And you see what you see where, where the breakdown is? No, we need to put this back up. Nice. Somebody please hear God. Please hear the Lord. You see that? Hallelujah. Having the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself, listen, of twain, one new man, so making peace. So everyone we see, we should be seeing ourselves or the Christ in them. You see that? Y'all may think we're just hearing a lesson and trying to make somebody, I don't know, I don't know what you may think, but I'm telling you, these words that I speak are spirit and they are life. Y'all hear God? They're spirit and they are life. You take them, even if you just have to think about them, you don't realize just saying this in this house, right here in this town, on the other side of the world, somewhere we're not even thinking about, is having an effect. Mm. Tell me, I'm talking about my God. Right. Y'all hear this? Exactly. I'm talking about my God, the same one who knows all things. He has all power, and he's everywhere. I'm saying what he says. Don't tell me this is not having an effect everywhere, because it is. People may not realize it, but it is. You see, that's why we got to change. You got to, like Bishop Paul just said over there, think on things above. You don't realize what that is changing. If you're going along with, oh, this is well just terrible and all, you say, what good is that doing? That's not doing any good at all. Hallelujah. That's not doing any good at all. See that? But you say what's true. When you say what is true, you can't put bury that under something. That's the light of Christ. That is going to shine somewhere. Blessed be the name. I thank God so much today he showed me that. He, I thank him so much today he showed me that. I blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank God the day that he showed me that. Just do what he says to do. And watch and see what's happening. Hallelujah. We would be most pitiful if we just came here and just had a group on Sunday and that's all it was. Spiritually. You see that? What, what, we just have a group on Sunday. We may get help. I said, but what about everybody else? You see that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for, for Christ for who he is. See, people don't realize this. I go again. I go. I'll come again. I'll receive you unto to myself. Where I am, then ye may be also. Well, I am said that where I am. So wherever he is, that's where we are in him. Don't think that when we agree with him, it is ineffective. Family, it is. We're going to have to understand that. Glory to God. Know who you are. Know who you are. I agreed with God. I'm in agreement with God, and that's helping a lot more than me. You see that? If that's all it is for, I mean, I mean, just think about it. I don't have to compare it with anything. Just think about it. See that? That he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross. See, Ruth knows this. She knows this. One. 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 No separate. No separate. Having slain the enmity thereby. There's, look, there's no enmity. Look, as long as you keep the grudge against your brother or hatred in your heart, but that, that is not Christ. Nope. It's not Christ. You see that? So then, verse 17, <coughs> came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were not, that, that were not, yes. For through him we both have access, listen to this, by one spirit unto the Father. You think God knew what he was talking about when he said by the prophet, not by might and the power, but by my spirit? You think he knew what he was talking about? By my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Hear that? Yep. Yep. Now therefore, you no more strangers and foreigners. See that? Who are you? Oh, no. Why not? See this? You no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I'm Ruth, your friend, your handmaid. You see this? Glory to God. Verse 30, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. 
Verse 20. Yeah. What did I say? 30. 30. <laughs> you might be going. Maturity. Stop. You might be going. I'm going in. No, I can't go to 30 in this chapter. Listen. Verse, verse, um, <laughs> verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Look, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. What you, that's holding everything together. What are you going to do with him when you're disagreeing with your brother? See that? What, what, what happens to him? He's become the head of the corner. Yeah, he's stone builder rejected, but he's the head of the corner now. Yes. See that? In whom all the building, in whom, in whom, Christ Jesus, all the building, fitly framed together, groweth. What are we doing? We're growing. Mm -hmm. Growing into what? An holy temple in the Lord, in him. Mm -hmm. oh, look. You don't know who you are? You feeling separated from God? You, you're part of the holy temple. What is this? Is this helping us? Is this helping us to be able to answer that question? Who are you? See that? Hallelujah. It goes on to say, last verse, in whom ye also build it together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Who are you? And why are you here? I'm, I'm, I'm part of the habitation of God. God lives in me. See that? How many people know that, though? How many people can not just parrot it, but I mean really know within? Can actually go in, meditate, pray unto God, and know within that, yes, Lord, this is true. We're one. See that? Hallelujah. Galatians. Back over to Galatians. Can't read all this to you, just some things I want to just point out. But the, the whole chapters, please, when you get a chance, read Galatians 3 and Galatians 4. This is helping us to see, to be able to answer the question who we are, so we'll know who we are in Christ. Glory to God. Verse 1 of, of Galatians 3. O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently or openly set forth, crucified among you. You see this? I'll give you like a, a shortcut. Mm -hmm. People learn things of the Spirit. Mm. I've seen it. I've seen it happen, and I thank God that people have come back full circle to it. People will learn things by the Spirit, and Try to figure out the rest of it in their minds. Hmm. So how did you start out in the spirit? And now you're trying to figure this out in the flesh. See that? That's what the darling sister was doing. Look. It's, it's back there. I don't have eyes behind me. I can't see you. You see what I'm saying? Glory to God. You looking what? You looking? Keep keep that forward look. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <clears throat> we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to remember that. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. See this? We're gonna have to know this that we are free from the law. Glory to the name of the Lord. Let's go up to verse twenty three. Please read it all and get a chance. Verse twenty three of three. Galatians three. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith has come, after the faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Somebody please hear God. The other keep on stood up here um, just to tell you, look, you, we're not, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We're not under the law. Right. And inevitably, you'll hear things and people are thrown right back under the law. Mm -hmm. right. See that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 26, For ye are all the children of God how? by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you, of you as baptized into Christ have, have looked what's happened. You put on Christ. See what I'm saying? If you know who you are, you know who he is. Yeah. 
You see, see you hear that? Glory to God. There is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. You do not go traipsing around Bethlehem of Judah like you still came out of flesh because that's not who you are. You hear that? You don't have to bring those actions. Well, we did it this way. You did? <laughs> we do it God's way. Right. You hear the difference in that? Exactly. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see this? You, 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 you see this. You need to see this really by the Spirit. That spiritually we're one in Him. We got to see this. We got to see this and we have got to understand this. Don't get, don't get weary with it, family. Glory to God. Right. Let me give you some more scriptures. Mm -hmm. Matthew 3. Let me go back over there because it's on three verses. Matthew 3. Matthew's gospel. I know when we read like this, but what we're doing, we're learning. We got the manual open today, all right? Mm -hmm. I know you have it open all the time, but I'm just saying we need to, to see some things. I want you so you know who you are. Verse 7 of Matthew 3. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. You, you, you hear this right here? Mm -hmm. Just keep on with tradition. And you just got that, that blanket statement, well, we're children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. See that right there? Mm -hmm. See, you see? He says, for I say unto you that God is able of these, listen to this now, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. That's what I was telling you. When you see Ruth and every what looks like rule has been broken naturally, but she ends up at Boaz's feet. Don't think God is working in the same economy that man is. God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see this right here? Mm -hmm. We got to hear these things. You, you, it's not like, well, if I got enough money, I can do anything I want. It's not that here. It's not that here at all. These spiritual things come up and over anything that we can ever imagine. Right. You see that? You don't believe it? Listen to who you are. I mean, just think, look at what God has poured into you. And just think about it. Who you are. Who, who are you? In Christ now, who are you? Go back and rehearse those things, and I guarantee you, you surprise yourself. Sometimes we just don't take time to do it. But I guarantee you, you surprise yourself when you look at the things that God has taught us. What we've learned in Him, who we are in the Christ. <clears throat> Listen, and, and we know in our hearts that that is true. I'm not just saying, just go say it, say it, say it. We got to know that this is true. Right. See that? Yep. We got to know in our hearts. If you think there's another power out there that, that's vying with God, you'll have some problems when you run in a situation where you need to come up and over. I'm telling you right now. But if you know the only power, you, things will get situated for you, and you won't even know it, ha and know it happened. I mean, just things, God is already working. You don't know it. I mean, just little everyday things, he'll be working them out. Like I told you that time we thought we were missing our, missing a flight. And the, the plane that we were on that was late, the pilot was the pilot of the plane that we're supposed to transfer to. They wasn't going nowhere till we got there. You understand what I'm saying? See, I'm just telling you to just let God do these wonderful things in our lives. Just watch him. We're not watching him because... It's kind of like being spoiled children sometimes. But, but it's all that. Just watch God and see how things just automatically. The, 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 the grace of God is doing things that you never, yeah, ever would have had control over. How would I have had control? You think I was asking, can, can we call ahead and make the way for the play? They would look to me like I was crazy. You see? Didn't have to do that. Already, already worked out. Blessed be the name of the Lord, I'm telling you. This, this, is, this is wonderful to me. This is just wonderful to me. Glory to God. Listen. I indeed, John Baptist speaking here. I indeed baptize you with water. Matthew 4, 3, 11 rather. Baptize with you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Hear that? Mm -hmm. 
You got people that baptize people in most places a minimum of once a month. Some people may be doing it every week. Now listen, there's another baptism other than what you're doing by your tradition. You hear this? Look, <clears throat> one's coming that's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He's going to baptize. Listen, family. We're going to be immersed in his spirit and fire. You understand that? When his fire comes, you think everything will stay the same? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> you think the fire of God? You, you, you think the fire of God is going to stay the same? As, as, as Nebuchadnezzar's guards, what the fire of God will do compared to, to what they thought they were doing. It'll just draw you in and let you be destroyed with your own mess. You see what I'm saying? The fire of God, look, it's, it's not doing what people think it is. It's not destroying, it's purifying. I got, I got three sons in here, and I'm in here with them. You see that? Got three sons in here, in this furnace, and I'm in here with them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Glory to his holy name. That's the kind of things we need to be putting our hearts and minds on, whose fan is in his hand, he thoroughly, look, thoroughly purge his floor. We had this scripture not too long ago. This is what Boaz got. I ain't no, no chaff coming up in this. See that? And gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with what? Listen, unquenchable fire. See, now think about it this way. Suppose there are things we're dealing with, with us, that we're dealing with, that keep us from entering in. You see? And God is so gracious, we learn of him, and that gets burned away. Well, did he set a torch to you? Not like you suppose. This is what I'm trying to help people. Because you got preachers telling people that if they don't do what they tell them to do, they're going to burn in hell fire. So I'm just trying to get us to be, be sensitive to God's ways. You see that? <clears throat> The fire is not what you think it is. But yes, it's going to purge everything. I, look, it takes me like all day and night to tell you some things that's been purged. But I thank God for his fire. But look, until his purpose is done in me, I'm still here testifying. Somebody in the Lord prophesying. Glory to his holy name. So what people are being made afraid of the very thing that's going to help you. Holy Ghost and fire. Now what's the doubt of that to be afraid of? Just like they're afraid of the revelation, and you open the book, first of the book. The revelation of Jesus Christ. But then people are told to be afraid of the book. I don't understand it. If it's the revelation or unveiling of Jesus Christ, what in there is to scare you if you want to follow on to know him? You should be glad that he's been getting ready to be unveiled unto us. Not afraid of that. See that? Give you, give you another scripture. You can write these down or you can get the message on the recorder later. Matthew 21, 42 through 43. Now when you read that, Matthew 21, 42 through 43, put it beside 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. Philippians 3 and 3, my dear sisters, and she led us in such a beautiful worship today. I'm going to read this one, Philippians 3 and 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Hear that? No confidence in the flesh. None. None. People looking to men for things only we should be looking to God for. Right. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, 22 through 24. Let me read this to you. Who are you? They say you're going anywhere. Listen. But ye, <laughs> ye are come to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. Now, Ruth's case, Bethlehem, Judah, is a picture of that. The house of bread and bread. You come to Mount Zion. This is where we are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
and to an innumerable company of angels. What are angels? Messengers. Like, like I'm starting to see developing here. Everybody is an angel. You have a message. You're a messenger. You're a messenger of God. You hear that? You got to get these pictures out your mind. You see that? Thank you, Lord. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn. This is what this whole thing is about when we see this, this um, interchange with Ruth and Boaz over there in verse 9. This, this firstborn. There are many more to come, family. There are many more to come later. Glory to God. It says, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Yep. That's the lyric in the song. You, you remember that? We'll come to Mount Zion. It came from here. The Holy Ghost wrote, writes these songs in here. See that? Verse 24 says, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that sprinkling, listen, better things than that of Abel. Mm -hmm. Abel's voice, listen, God Almighty. It, the, his blood cried from the ground. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. This voice of the Son is out of the Spirit. Somebody please hear these things. You see this? Glory to the name of the Lord. His, speak, his voice spoke to God out of the ground. But listen, we're speaking out of the Spirit. Think what that's going to do. From above, glory to his holy name. Family, we'll finish in the, in the, in the, in the Wednesday study, mm -hmm. but I want you to understand this right here. I'm going to just, just, just say this for us. She asked him to spread the corner of his skirt over her. That's what the translation mm -hmm. is saying. To put her, her under his wing. Mm -hmm. That word for skirt is like a mantle. If you know yourself, listen very carefully you will know what all these things are saying right here and why God taught us the way he did. Mm -hmm. Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. If you see me when I'm taken, if you see me when I'm taken, mm -hmm. you can have, you'll have a double portion. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear this right here? Mm -hmm. You may say, how is that fitting? I told you we didn't pull messages out of the air. We've been a people on a pilgrimage with God from day one. You hear this? If you see me when I'm taken, listen, he was ascended on high. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to come again. Right. See, man decided who was what and what they were doing. Well, if the Spirit of God came on Pentecost, whose spirit is that? You understand? Mm. So the very one you put off is the one that wants to tabernacle with us right now, not yonder and by and by. He wants to tabernacle. He, he's the one, the Spirit of Truth, wants to teach us, take up the Lord's and show it unto us. And all the time he's doing what he's doing, Father's good pleasure. We have got to see him. We got to understand what all this means. And when you do, you can tell somebody who he is. Right. You don't know this. You don't know who you are. And you ain't not able to tell what this is. You see that? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you see me when I'm taken, Elijah went up. The mantle fell down. Somebody, please hear the Lord. We are not just left here on a planet trying to fend for ourselves and come up with all these multiplicity of denominations that are ineffective. We are children of God, and there's a kingdom right here that we're in, not after a while, but right now. Amen. Went up, that mantle fell down. Somebody hear the Lord. I don't know about you all, but he skirts over me. Y'all hear the Lord? You hear? It's over you too. Glory to God. The mantle of Christ. Not just talking about anybody. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what do you see Elisha doing? Double what Elijah did. Well, Jesus said, if I go, greater works you're going to do because I'm going to Father. 
See, when I come back, it's not just going to be me, me and Father coming back to you, somebody. Please hear the Lord. We don't realize who, listen, our God is in the midst of us. That's what separated Israel in the scriptures in the Old Covenant. Everybody knew that their God was in the midst of them. This the God, their God brought them across the great sea. Everybody heard about you and it didn't have internet, okay? Everybody knows who he is. Blessed be the name of the Lord and who we are. We just need to know who we are in him. Thank you, Father. I'm just telling you what the Lord wants us to know. Can he, can he, can he, can we be trusted to let him be God in the midst of us? Do, uh, isn't it sickening? Do you want to see anybody else act like they're doing something? And, and, and just as powerless as they can be. Listen, our, our dependence is upon the Christ. We can do nothing here in and of ourselves if God doesn't do it through us. If you get any, any iota of revelation about anything, God did it. All the increase comes from God. You might see a little watering and you might see a little sowing, but I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody bringing no increase in here but the God. God himself is the only one can do that. And we got sense enough to recognize and believe and understand that part. Glory to his holy name. I just want to encourage y'all. I know it's, it's getting intense, and I'm going to need some time to say what the Lord tells me to say. So I appreciate your love and your patience, but we haven't even scratched the surface. We'll just, we'll just continue to do what he says, his will, his way. Is that all right? Amen. God bless you. Thank you.